Hello guys, hello. Welcome back to my channel, channel, channel. It's been a long time since we did that uh, that intro. My name is Cheryl Grabowski. Welcome to my channel. I am a survivor of narcissistic abuse, um, me and my four children. It's been uh, a long time since I realized, it's been about four or five years since I realized what narcissistic abuse is. At the time, I had no idea. There are thousands, millions of people still in this world who don't know what that is. They don't understand that NPD is a mental illness. These are people who are suffering with the mental illness of narcissistic, personality disorder. <laughs> Some of these narcissists in our family are our parents, some children, some lovers, some bosses, some college friends, some best friends, some of your best friend's husbands, or some of your best friend's wives are narcissists. Your loved one may be in a relationship with a narcissist, and the relationship has been it, it's just, it's not been good. And you know for sure that something is really, really wrong. And you've learned about what narcissism is. Like, you know that they, the things that they do, how they run their plays. And the biggest thing about the narcissist is that they have you walking on eggshells and they are incapable of empathy. And then what you find out is that since they are incapable of empathy, and they don't love you and they don't know what's emotionally appropriate, then it hurts you. Like you suffer in life because of their mental illness, you know? So they cannot meet you there emotionally. And when you emotionally, and when you have a friend that's in a marriage and then she comes back, well, you, she doesn't have to tell you, you notice like at barbecues and stuff like that, when that when her spouse is around, that is always just something. And when you all go places, that spouse always shows his patootie. Like you realize that. And it's been, you realize too that she's in shambles, your friend. And she's losing weight, her hair is falling out and you know, that she's just not happy. But she, you know, she's addicted to her narcissist, you know? So my name is Cheryl. I've suffered from narcissistic abuse. I've been married to narcissists, you know? I come from a narcissistic family, so I know what I'm talking about when it comes to those toxic, terrible, underdeveloped, and broken people, okay? Now, I would love for you guys to comment, like, and subscribe. Do not forget to like this video, okay? Before you get up out of here, guys, all of you new guys who've subscribed to this channel, I love you guys to pieces. I need you to support me by liking the video. Don't forget, okay? Don't forget. Like the video. Share the video, too. Share it. Because somebody is going to need to hear it, okay? All right. So I promised y'all a video. I want to share with you guys my thoughts on Truth Hurts and Money Boy Trey since I since I got to know them, you know, since, you know, I've watched, I've watched their content, you know, I've been in their chats, you know, over the last, when did this engagement, so to speak, happen between me, Truth Hurts, Money Boy Trey, uh, Trey True Sippers and Steak Gang, when was it? How long has it been, y'all? Maybe about three months? <laughs> about the time span that you learn about somebody when they got highly narcissistic traits or they might be narcissists themselves, you got about three months. The love bomb lasts about three months. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and in my opinion, it certainly was a love bomb situation. Okay? It really was. Because they came in with all kind of accolades and compliments and support. 
you know, they shared my videos out a lot and all of that stuff. And, and, and I shared them out too. I even shared Truth Hurts to my Facebook. And um, we were at work and we listened to them and everything like that. They're, they were not growing like I was growing because, I mean, shit, I'm Grabowski. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I just got a whole lot bundled up in this 5-2 five five package. There's a lot of bundling going on over here. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So, but on a serious note. What I've experienced with these people in the last, uh, I say last three weeks to a month. Um, has it been three weeks? About three weeks. Um, has been, it just reminds me of how narcissistic relationships go. You know, because it's, when it comes to Money Boy, Trey, and Truth Hurts, you deal with narcissistic people you play hell not trying to offend them because a lot of times narcissistic, narcissistic people can suffer with low self-esteem and they be, you know, they don't trust anybody any damn way. That's the, that's the biggest thing. They don't trust. So they're always being hypervigilant and watching and waiting for the moment that someone snakes them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even the Grabowski, you can tell the way that I'm dealing with Trinaya now. I'm not worried about that. You see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not worried about the snaking. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I'm looking, I'm living, I'm interacting, I'm giving people, because I'm an empathetic person. You see what I'm saying? I, I, it's not about that to me. Because I know that people can just be people and people are just human, okay? But at the same time, my narcissistic, my, my detector is detecting narcissistic energy when it comes to those people, in my opinion. In my opinion. You understand? Now, I wanted to make note of, there was a lady who emailed me. And she talked to me about that money boy, Trey. She said, Cheryl Gabowski, she said, listen. She said, I used to listen to her. And she said, I enjoyed listening to her. She said, but when that man came about, she said, I had to let it all go. She said, because she believes that he has brought out the demon or the demon energy that's in her. You know, he sort of like brought out her bad side. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know that in this incident that I've had with her and him, I absolutely see that. I see the play being played, how he did it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm seeing how he was saying to her because they both don't trust anybody. You know, when they found out that Shergabowski is not perfect, you know, because narcissistic people, you know, it's that Miss Cheryl for me. It was, you know, fake. But narcissistic people, this is what they do. They think, they put people on pedestals. Because they don't have a real, a real sense of, you know, like nobody's not, nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no perfect person. You know what I'm saying? There is no perfect spouse. There's no perfect friend. There's no perfect boss. There's no perfect associates. There are no perfect people. So they actually put me on a pedestal. And I, I like being on the pedestal. I did. <laughs> because, I mean, I think I'm fantastic, you know. Um, not perfect, but fantastic. And so th there I was on the pedestal, okay. But, you know, when you go up on the pedestal, it's not going to last long. They're going to just come and snatch you down off of it. Because now, while they idealize you, this great Grabowski, they'll soon take it down when they find out that you're not a perfect person. And why? You say, Sugar Bowser, but why? Because the pathological envy and jealousy that they have emotionally, that's a very much part of narcissistic people. 
they're jealous of, you say, sure of what? They're jealous of personality, um, personality traits. They might be jealous of the ability to meet for me to sit underneath the YouTube uh, streaming app and be able to engage all of this, all these people, be able to have these conversations with men and women and children and um, real people and some bots. <laughs> Truth Hurt said Cheryl Grabowski has the gift of gab. Um, so she's able to, she, well, she's quick on her toes. Yeah, like I don't really like to write down things and document things. I don't like to take time to make uh, screenshots and, and videos and little snippets and clips. And That's not me. You know, I'm the type of girl, like in my professional world, in my hairstylist life, you know, I'm running six clients at one time in a whole rotation and everybody is out the door. I don't do this anymore, but when I used to do it, everybody's out the door in about three and a half, four hours to tops. That's six people. And I run them all at the same time. Now in my blowout world, you know, I could probably run more than that because it takes me like 40 minutes um, to do a a blowout but what i'm saying is what i'm saying is i'm quick on my feet you know if i do have the gift of gab which i do know how to think and move and talk and change and do all the things that i need to do i'm just quick like that i think it might have something to do with a little piece of adhd which they call fast brain <laughs> my brain is quick <laughs> that's why i can't I don't like the right stuff and it's too slow like it just throws me off you know what i'm saying throw my ass out there and lights current camera action baby it's going down so the 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 streaming app is a wonderful person, a wonderful place for a person like me. Miss Gift of Gab. Okay, period. Don't get mad with me because you got to sit down and think and write everything down, walk it down like a snail. Okay, because it's not giving snail over here. It's not giving snail. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm watching, looking at how this idealization, the pedestal thing, and now it's time for the true sippers and the stake gang to devalue me. Because in order for you to experience a devalue, you have had to be put up on a pedestal first. There's got to be a courtship of some sort between individuals or panel people and content creators, them and me. The idealization, the pedestal area era, the realizing that I'm not, I'm just a, a regular gal, you know, I'm not a perfect person, and then the devalue. Devalue comes in, let's take her down, says the state gang. Now listen, all you new subscribers, please listen because I'm talking about me as a content creator and a, and a group of people, okay? But in your life, it might be you and one narcissist. So it's just two people. Or it could be you and your family. Narcissistic family, then you are the scapegoat or the... Uh, the black sheep or whatever, and then your family is narcissistic. They are running plays on you and always have done it. But so I'm just showing you how it works in a different way. And so it's time for them to devalue, to take the value from me. The value that you say, Cheryl Kowalski, what value? The value that they gave me when they put me on the pedestal and shared my videos out, that value. It's time to take that away. I've listened to Money Boy Trey say these things about other people that he's dealt with in the past, like Jasmine Way and some other folks. You see what I'm saying? Because I've been I've been privy to um I've paid more attention to Truth Hurts than I have to him, even though he was there on the panel with her. You know what I'm saying? So it's time for them to devalue me, to take me down from that pedestal that they put me on, which is idealization, which is based on fantasy. It's not real. It's like a love bomb situation when you, like you idolize somebody or idealization, you idealize them. You have an idea of who they are in your mind. And it's like on a pedestal, so it's time to take me down. So in the devalues, uh, in the devaluation or the devalue stage, now comes the sneer campaign. 
So you say, Cheryl Gabowski, what is that? So, you know, I already talked to you guys about the smear. And you might be going through this when you're in your family when a narcissistic person wants to now. Now they want to attack you um, because the negative energy is the bigger supply. It gives them more of what they, you know, they thrive in negativity and negative in energy. They like the shittiness. They like the fighting. They like all those things, right? So now it's time to when they notice that this thing about the lie in, in, you know, on my channel, the lie that they say I told that was enough for them. That was all they needed. They, they, they just, <laughs> they just needed that much to start to devalue. Okay. All, all narcissistic people are like that. They need that much to start to devalue. Just that much. That's a twinge. I'm talking about a twinge. And so they have the twinge. Okay? So the twinge get the twinge in this twinge. The full blast smear campaign. Campaign At the time that I experienced the smear with them, I got a smear going on on UP's channel. And I got a smear going on on Stacey's channel. And now these people are smearing me. I got three levels. <laughs> Somebody said, sure, go about to use a bad mama jamma. I got three levels of smear going on at the same time. I got one on the left and one on the right. I got one in the middle. Mm -hmm. They got a smear campaign going about me, about me. Okay, that's what's going on. They are smearing me to smithereens, okay? Um, so, this is the thing about narcissistic people. Narcissistic people are in trouble. Guess why? Because there is an army of empaths, people like me, who are in the know. We are aware of the narcissist. And so what we do, see, we know what's getting ready to happen. We know how it happens. We know all the tools that they use because that's how they roll. You know what I'm saying? And so now, so am, am, are my feelings attached to the smear? No. We're dealing with narcissistic people then. MPD is a mental illness. I'm just saying, if they highly narcissistic, oh, they're terrible and toxic. If they have MPD, then they're sick and mentally ill. So why would my emotions be involved? They're not an intimate partner of mine. They're not my family member. Or or they're not, those over there are my family member, but they are strange. You know what I'm saying? Um, but <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same. They're not my children. I don't care. See what I'm saying? So, I, you know, I'm the narc slayer. You say, sure, go ask, what is that? We slay narcs. We slay them. I tell you guys what they are doing and why they are doing it. So I empower you and increase the value of your life because you're going to be running. We live in a highly narcissistic uh, society. Okay? And especially when it comes to social, uh, to the media, Y'all like that little piece of color right now? That's cute, ain't it? Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, the the full smear campaign is going on on all levels. Coming at me um, straight at the front door and on side doors, too. Okay. Smear campaigns. Um. The purpose of the smear, as it come, as it relates to Money Boy Trey and Truth Hurts, is to devalue me. Okay, it is to make people feel like, oh, she's a like, don't listen to her. She's really not the narc slay and slaying the whole time. Don't listen to her. She don't know what she's talking about and teaching the whole time. Uh -huh. Don't listen to her. She's not a real person and being real the whole time. The people that I talk to uh, about the narcissistic abuse, they are winning. They're getting their lives back. <laughs> they are leveling up. Ain't nobody thinking about these content creators who are mad because I showed up. Because we have a reputation. Um, for all you new people who, who dig the Grabowski, we have a reputation in the sector. Reputation for being... Um, for being... Um, not the sharpest knives in the, in the drawer. 
you know, they call it the slow sector. But what, what the T-Channel people didn't understand is there ain't nothing slow about the Grabowski, though. Uh, the Grabowski actually was planted here, which is I, to do a work. Because I got purpose in my life. <laughs> a wink, wink, which is more than obvious, right? Yeah. So, Money Boy Trey, Truth Hurts, do the smear campaign. Um, and they take their support back by no more sharing out Cheryl's videos. We really don't even hardly want to talk about her other than on Money Boy Trey's night show. And um, we're going to convince our people to um, that she's a fault, she's a phony and a fraud. And since we are still moderators on her channel, we're going to go back there and block 900 people. We're going to block the people who do support her, even though we know that we got to have our supporters, but we don't care nothing about Cheryl Gabowski's supporter. So we're going to, we're going to say that she doesn't have real support because we've got to try money boy, Trey and truth hurts. We've got to try to get her to believe that she's nothing, get her to believe that she's something other than what she says that she is. We, we've got to get her to give us her power so we can win. <laughs> it's a sabotage for me. Like everything else was doable and everything, you know, not that serious, but the, the manipulation inside of the app where you as a moderator on my channel, go back there and block all the supporters. Like, I'm talking on camera. I can't, I can't pay attention to all of what's being said and done. And we're getting ready to end this video uh, very, very soon. Because we want to... These type of videos, we don't want them to be too long. So, Money Boy Trey and Truth Hurts are thugs in the YouTube streets. What they did inside of my... Uh, as moderators uh, to me, shows of the slime the disgusting, the low life didness, the not fairness, the, the hidden below the belt, the street energy, all of that. So while you guys are doing a smear campaign, you just smeared yourself. Because nobody is stupid. This is what I told my daughter, and I'm about to end the video. This is what I told my daughter. Everybody in the YouTube sector is not slow. They are doctors, lawyers, psychiatrists, counselors, business people, entrepreneurs, possibly judges, and every type of other career you can think of. I found this judge on YouTube the other day. She got a channel, Black Judge. Black Judge. She's a regular black woman. Got, got her hair cut short. She cool. She real cool. Like, she and I could be friends. Uh-huh. There's a lot of spectacular people in the sector, and they are watching you guys be block people, like, on the corner. Truth hurts. You are a mother with thriving daughters and a son. You need to leave money, boy, Trey alone. Leave him alone. Because you know Tony probably already told you to do that. He probably been told you to do that. I sat and thought about it last night. And I don't know why, if he asked you to let Trey go, why would you still hold on to Trey? What is that about? What's going on with that? Because see, if my man would have asked me to let another man go that's on my channel when I know I could do my commentary on my own, then he'd have been gone. Simple as that. But you keep on holding on to Trey. I don't know what's going on with that. People speculate that you have sagual energy for him. I don't know. I can't tell that that's the case. But other people do speculate about it. I don't know. Who knows? 
But I'm just saying, this 2024, Tony is gone. <laughs> sure about it, everything I do on my channel is, is new. People keep coming in and say, sure, I used to listen to you, but now you're different. And I say, yes, I am. But you're not. You're the same. You're moving just like you've been doing. But you say you were going to change. Girl, get yourself together. Get yourself together now. Because I know how you can be about your feelings. But what I did, I'm going to say this right here. And this is the truth. You are talented. Not going to share. Gabowski never going to take that back. Never. Because that's the truth in the light. You are talented. But you need to leave Trey alone. And flex it too. Flex it too. Sorry. Flex it too. Leave her alone so let her just go and thrive and do what she want to. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't believe that she tells you the truth. You know, you're, you call yourself truth hurts. But what kind of truth hurt you? Is it the kind that I'm speaking of now? Because my intention is not to hurt you. It is. But my intention is... Or what I would like for you to do is to do something and make those people proud who follow you through the mud. Anyway, money boy Trey, you are slime for what you did to inside of my channel as a moderator. The, the sad part about that is that you raising that little girl. And that you're just that unethical for you to do something like that. And I don't know if you think it's funny, but it, that's not funny. It's a huge character flaw. Massive. While you sit on your night show and talk about me.